So first of all, um, how does the HKMA roadmap cater for banks in different stages of RegTech adoption? You touched upon it a little bit with, with one third being in, implemented. Can you elaborate a little bit further? Thank you. Uh, thanks, Ruth. Uh, you have pointed out a key challenge we are facing. As I said, we have nearly 200 uh, banking institutions in our market. They have different maturities in terms of um, technology adoption. Some are more advanced, um, like those international banks, but some are still pondering when to start their fintech journey. Um, whether or not um, to embrace technology is, uh, at the end of the day, a business decision for individual firms. Uh, as the regulator, what we'll do is to showcase the potential of RegTech to all the banks and put them together with the tech firms uh, and try to identify some common problems and ask them to, you know, all those uh, stakeholders to um, join me work on you know, uh, identifying solutions for those uh, common problem statements. Uh, as I said, we'll be publishing a series of practice guides uh, for the smaller institutions, hoping that um, that will provide more um, detailed guidance to assist them with uh, red tech adoption. And additionally, we will also be building up a uh, red tech knowledge hub, which is a web, uh, web based um, a repository of uh, red tech information, providing them with all the resources uh, so that they can, um, you know, get to know more about red tech and, um, uh, and implement those uh, red tech solutions. Great, this is really helpful for the firms as well. Uh, and what steps has the Hong Kong Monetary Authority taken to further attract international red tech firms into your Hong Kong market? Well, overseas red tech firms are welcome to come to Hong Kong and grab the opportunities available here. Well, unlike some of our neighboring economy, we, we don't offer, you know, bespoke um, tax concessions or et cetera, just to lure a particular company to come to Hong Kong. Everybody is treated the same here, be it local or overseas. As the regulator, uh, we aim to provide a level paying field for everybody. We have a sandbox and a chat room to provide tech firms with our supervisory feedback, making it easier for tech firms to adapt their products um, to suit the local environment. Um, the government of Hong Kong is very supportive too. They have recently launched a subsidy scheme to provide incentive to financial institutions to partner with tech firms uh, to carry out uh, uh, proof of concepts. There are also many programs and funding schemes to support fintech startups at different stages of um, development, including financial subsidies, affordable office spaces, uh, sharing of market research, reaching startup with uh, large corporates uh, for uh, solution matching, and also linking up uh, the startup uh, with uh, potential investor like venture capital. Great, and I think this will be very topical for our um, discussion in a minute. And maybe one last question, given that we have been through a pandemic here, what were the lessons learned from the pandemic in terms of the importance of RegTech? Well, the pandemic has changed the way we live and do business. Some of these changes are long, start, uh, long lasting or even permanent. So many people have talked about um, how the pandemic has accelerated the digitalization of the economy. In the banking sector, what we have seen is that it is increasingly popular for banks to provide services to their customers through online channels. Um, about 20 banks in Hong Kong have already rolled out a WeMo account opening over the past year. The impetus uh, brought about by the health crisis to fintech adoption may be more obvious in the space, uh, in the fintech space. But however, as more people and, uh, uh, go digital, an increasing volume of data uh, will be available and accessible to financial institutions and the tech firms. I think this will provide a very nutri uh, nutritious uh, breeding ground for red tech development. Thank you very much. I think this gives us a lot of good food for thought. 
Okay, so we move now to the second part of the session, which is really going to be an interactive panel discussion and just a few housekeeping rules. We invite the fintechs that are in the chat with us to either raise their hand or speak up or, or send us a little chat message uh, if they want to ask a question. And please, when you ask a question, say your name and your company name. Um, and we will now start with a brief uh, intro from King Leung, who is the head of fintech. And we will then have a discussion together with Ms. Irene Lee, I introduced previously, and Ms. Wendy Ennis. And we really would love to hear throughout their conversation from the RecTechs uh, how we can develop uh, RecTech in Hong Kong further. So briefly over to King then. Okay, thank you very much, Ruth. And again, the welcome everyone for joining us. I just want to echo the, what the Raymond has shared with us. Uh, first of all, we are just so grateful for the leadership from HMA for lay, laying out the framework has been pushing this agenda for a number of years. And for us at UMS Hong Kong and also our other Hong Kong the government organizations, you know, from the South Port Science Park, which are the two government funded um, basically accelerators uh, for UMS Hong Kong and also other uh, organizations from the universities and so forth. So we just collectively refer them as the Hong Kong Inc. organizations. Now, if you ask around, basically all the organizations I just mentioned have RecTech as one of the priority segments within FinTech that we are basically fostering the developments. So that's why the, throughout the whole year, particularly for RecTech firms around the world, there will be some programs for you to get engaged and fast track your, in a way, your discussions with potential clients. So obviously I think Raymond just mentioned about the, the global RecTech challenge uh, that will be um, uh, concluding in, in June timeframe. But then uh, at UMass Hong Kong, we also have another program called Global Fast Track Program that is designed to basically help to attract uh, FinTechs around the world and to, to connect them with potential clients and investors as well. Also, our colleagues at Cyberport and Science Park also have similar programs at different time of the year. So literally throughout the entire year, we have different business matching programs with the so intense to fast track your way to enter the Hong Kong market. So this is the, in a nutshell, the Hong Kong story. Now, at the same time, for those of you who have been following the developments of the enormous mainland China markets, uh, you might picked up in the news that in the recent uh, 14th five-year plan. There are a number of things that are being highlighted as priority developments uh, related to fintech. And guess what? One of them is also RecTech, because I think for fintechs, not only in Hong Kong, but also definitely in China, have been literally growing gangbuster. As a result, the regulators uh, in Beijing also feel very strongly that we need to bring in some technology to help uh, maintain some order. Right, by, by using the technology in a scalable way uh, to sort of regulate the whole, the whole the ecosystem. So that's why there's just enormous emphasis in this space. So with that, I just want to sort of uh, give you a sense that this is something that is uh, basically uh, driven by everybody in the Hong Kong Inc. family. So definitely we would love to see you uh, helping us to enrich our Hong Kong ecosystem. Now, so with that, I guess I would uh, turn it back to Ruth to help us kick off this uh, more interactive uh, conversation. Excellent. Thank you very much, King. So lots of activity in terms of guiding and helping and matching supply and demand in the space. And of course, if we just look back on the regulatory developments we've witnessed since the financial crisis, banks have so many legislations and laws to comply with and dealing that with humans to do that is impossible and everybody understands that. So I think it's really, as you say, about the scalable application of the right solutions that are in line with complying in the right way. Um, in terms of kicking it off, we have now two banks with us to share their experiences because they're both based in Hong Kong. And Irene from UBS, um, as a sort of incumbent traditional bank, could you share some views with us just to kick off the conversation around your experience with RecTech solutions and how the Rectex came across to UBS in terms of giving you propositions that were a direct fit or maybe very specific or maybe too broad. What, what is sort of your experience you can share? Because I think for all the Rectex on the panel, it's very interesting to hear from a big international bank how you've been approaching Rectech in Hong Kong. 
Hey, thanks, Ruth. Um, so by a short introduction by myself, actually, I'm a compliance officer in UBS um, Hong Kong. And actually, I look after the um, private banking business and from a reg tech point of view, as well as the traditional digitalized kind of um, uh, process and investment uh, um, product as well. And I have another hat on it is that I am a co-chair of the reg tech committee in the FinTech Association of Hong Kong. So I have a two roles in between. One of that is that I'm a representative from a bank side of things and to look at the regulations, whether uh, all the initiative are actually rolled out in a compliant way and I am also a, like a gatekeeper on all these things. However, I also sit in the community and talk to the relevant um, stakeholders, including the vendors, um, the, the bank side, and then the buy side and the sell side. So I have a, a diverse voice on the bank community and, and, and that it helps um, the bank um, for my job as well to shape um, kind of um, skeleton as well as how we actually deal with the regulations as well as if we are in, in, uh, involving in the industry association discussion as well as some direct dialogue with the regulators, somehow we have also some kind of collective voices. So back to my day-to-day -day kind of um, experience. So our bank is actually quite um, sizable in a sense of, uh, in terms of scale and scope. So you can see that um, in, in, in actually in APAC, uh, Hong Kong and Singapore is the regional hub, as well as we actually have a global presence in, in the other locations. And in APAC, we actually focus on the private banking kind of business. So um, actually you can see that our banks is actually traditionally quite, uh, quite um, um, focused on incentive kind, in, in intensive kind of human touch or human kind of services. So our clients is very used to um, get some um, kind of advice from our uh, um, um, relationship manager or client advisors. So uh, the demand for the digitalization, they may not be that active as the other like retail or virtual banks where they are more tax savvy. So, um, so where are the driving forces? So somehow it will coming from the um, legislative kind of accommodative regs, and also it will come from some kind of client's demand in a sense. Why I say so? Because even the clients that's not really need a very fully digitalized kind of um, service experience, but however, they are also uh, part of the um, digital space. They may be the CEO of the fintech um, um, startup firms or their firms is actually embracing some digital uh, transformation where they also need a strong banker to provide or facilitate a seamless uh, kind of automated kind of experience for them. So it becomes uh, having a big pressure as well as a conventional bank because they have the demand. They also, they have a choice to choose uh, different bankers to suit their needs. And I think that as a, a, like a responsible bank like us, we also try to think about what sort of um, um, so-called digitalized experience we can offer to the clients and also to make them um, a more um, um, value added when they um, invest um, investment product via our bank channels. So these are the, the big business use case that we have. So along the value chain, we can see lots of different use cases that we can open up for um, initiative, waging from remote onboarding from onboarding, from how we pitch the prospectus to come open the account. And also then uh, talk about the investment advice, how actually we can um, adopt robo advice in between in support of the human intelligence kind of advice. And also the clients may have some kind of um, kind of different allocation in their portfolio. So how about the balancing of the portfolio? What are the portfolio-based kind of investment advice we can provide based on some semi-automated or fully automated kind of scoring method? So there would be some robotic kind of things or data analytic kind of tools in between. So this is the FLF investment advice. Then after the sale, they may would want to read their statement. So what would be the digital read of the statement for them um, so that they can compare the performance in the past and some projection in the future. So this could be also one of the use cases that we can think of.
And also at the end, um, about the reconciliation and regulatory reporting and the um, 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 kind of uh, coping with the new regulatory change. So this is the compliance job to actually keep abreast of all these evolving regs. But that's too much, right? Like global regulations plus regional regulations, and they are a lot of extraterritorial um, implications that we need to cross check. So then we need to, a big database to store all this data and to pick the cherry pick the applicable ones for us to do the gap analysis, how the new initiative are all comply with the uh, uh, regulations. So these are the day to day work that a compliance officer may face. And with the new use case, we actually involve in all these daily encounters every day. So before joining this panel, I actually involved in another global discussion on uh, digitalization of a particular uh, investment advice journey. And we are looking at what will be the new um, demand from the clients and how we actually need to transform our legacy system to cope with that. And it is more difficult than a new new setup of the virtual bank because we have our own burden. We have lots of legacy systems and, and with a mainframe setup. And it is so costly to transform it even for a little bit of things. Maybe the outstanders will think that, hey, just change of the text in the prompt in the system alert. It's just so easy. Just 10 minutes, then 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 why is border? What is the cost involved? But I tell you. In, inside of our engine, there's a bunch of people working on it, and there's different system linking into a big bunch of systems. So every single move will become a costly, sustainable cost for a bank like us. So um, you can see that we, we will have a lot of considerable factors for that journey uh, in our digitalization. And as reflected by Raymond, and thanks for that two year uh, kind of white paper and roadmap, it actually is spelled out all the um, key things that a bank like us uh, is facing. Thank you very much. I mean, you touched upon that big challenge of the incumbents in terms of the complex and slightly old and very big legacy technology that has to be almost tackled bit by bit. And I guess that is definitely one of the areas where there's some rectic solutions that are bolted on on the outside, which can hopefully provide more quick wins. And then there's some rectech solutions that require more of an embeddedness. Uh, but I think as as Hong Kong is driving those efforts of adoption, I think there's a whole sort of stream around that modernization that will have to happen both inside the bank and with the market connecting those solutions. So very, very helpful to have some thoughts from you. Um, handing over to Wendy. Uh, Wendy is from Mox Bank and uh, you are sort of more of a newer bank player. So maybe to get some of your views around RegTech and adoption and what areas you think are working well in Hong Kong. Thank you, Wendy. Sure, sure. Yes, let's clarify. It's the bank that's new, not me. Um, yes, so look, if I just refer back to the white paper that uh, Raymond mentioned earlier um, and the, the three biggest challenges that banks have um, in terms of adoption, so it's budget, um, it's lack of solution, and it's finding that talent that's able to implement it internally. Now, from a VB perspective, so from the virtual banks uh, in Hong Kong, we've come at it from a slightly different perspective. We obviously had a budget because we're building from, you know, we're building a bank. Um, I think in terms of where we are from a financial crime perspective and in terms of the journey, there's lots of solutions out there. So I don't think that we were constrained by lack of solution. Um, and then in terms of talent, uh, again, I think because the VBs were new, we were in a unique position where um, you know, we had a lot of interested talent who wanted to come across from a compliance perspective and, and be part of that, be part of a new journey, because it's not very often, I think, in a compliance function that you have an opportunity to be part of something quite, uh, quite innovative. Um, with that said, we've still had our challenges. So, you know, I'll give some food for thought, maybe as your, uh, you know, as the reg techs on this call are looking to sell into companies, expand solutions, or perhaps for companies that they're already working with, um, maybe some of this insight might help in terms of how you uh, position. Um, so stakeholder buy-in is incredibly uh, critical. Uh, you know, reg tech is not usually off the shelf. It uh, requires an understanding of complexity of design and deployment. 
Um, so it, it's very critical that you know as you're working with a, a, a company that you that you have that in mind. Um, that you know, reg techs are without a doubt they're not in short supply of smart people, smart technology. Um, but they want, you, you may not always have the SME knowledge or you may not have had the exposure of working in a very heavily regulated industry. So keeping in mind as you go in and build with, uh, with a bank of understanding upfront some of those challenges, uh, either from a governance or an adherence to regulation, that you should keep in mind that things may potentially be, um, be need to be uh, approached from a, a higher level of consideration, because I think that will certainly help and manage expectations as you're building out um, building out the solution. Because you're not out of the box, obviously it's often akin to customization. So I think it's getting that understanding up front because I know, you know, as we were building up from a MOX perspective, our expectation on what we were buying versus um, the reg techs that we were working with and what they were giving with us is naturally going to be that that give and take, but just continually touching base and, and getting an understanding of that. I think that's one of the challenges that, you know, we've learned from um as we come um i think you know in both parties both from the the banks that you're dealing with um but also the you know you yourselves is getting used to working in a virtual environment and some of that's due to the pandemic i think some of that is just due to the fact that resources are overseas um you know you're not going to find all the tech support that you need uh within the hong kong market but that's okay um you know we we've managed and i think all the vbs have managed to to exist in that space, but again, it, it's it's just a, a new way of working. Um, I, I think as well, Matt, helping the company that you're working with manage expectations. You know, if we're talking about machine learning, it's great if you're starting off with a with a new VB. We have clean data. That, that's fantastic. But the reality is we're not going to see the real benefits of that solution until we have enough historical data. So I think it's working in partnership to um, you know, support the person, support the company that you're working with to be able to sell that internally to stakeholders so that they can be clear on how their investment is working, talking about where milestones are along the way. Um, and then upskilling, you know, potentially where there's an opportunity to upskill the company that you're working with. Um, you know, a lot of companies, um, you know, even in, in a new area, we're, we're working in agile environments, that's great, but not all stakeholders are working in, in agile environments. Um, so, you know, things may fail, but they fail quickly. So again, I think it's, um, you know, it's working with, with the companies. We've, we've had a great opportunity um, with the reg tech that we've been working with to uh, work together to upskill each other. We've, we've helped upskill them on some of the regulations and the governance that is just very normal um, in the banking industry. And on the flip side, they've helped um, upskill us in terms of the technology. And I think that that's been a great partnership. Thanks, Ruth. Great. And, and maybe just a few words around the areas of rec tech that you've been sort of uh, implementing, which were the key focus areas for your bank? Yeah, so we've started with uh, transaction monitoring. Um, so a reg tech solution around transaction monitoring. Um, but we've also built it into our model. So we've built it into how we onboard. Um, we are looking at it from a transaction monitoring perspective. We're also looking at it from a name screening perspective. Again, I think you know we're in a unique position where we're starting from scratch. Um, so we've had an opportunity um, to be able to look at the whole model. But I, I will make note that we we haven't done reg tech across the board. Um, there's a lot of you know traditional companies out there that are still doing a great job. And it's very resource intensive, as I've said, to to you know to start bringing in reg tech. Um, so I don't think that you know companies need to necessarily boil the ocean. Um, innovation is innovation. It comes in many different ways. Reg tech is one way that you can do innovation, but um, also looking at traditional providers to supplement that and just looking at new ways of doing things um, is an approach that we've taken. So we have a hybrid model. Very helpful. Um, does anybody want to ask a question already from, from the people online? We heard about key solutions around transaction monitoring, very consistent across both banks, onboarding the digitization of that journey, as well as transaction screening. Um, do we have anyone on the in the chat that is providing those types of services and would like to ask a few questions around accessing the Hong Kong market?
because I think the the big question then becomes how do you implement that at scale? Because uh, I think is once you define an area where you can at least have a clear parameter, this is the area we need to implement something new in, and you build that sort of back end connectivity. Um, you mentioned um, earlier, Wendy, which was really helpful, I think, for the Rectex on the call here, that it can often be custom made. There's always an element of tailor making. Um, and I think that's something that uh, people need to be quite aware of. But once it's tailor made and implemented, you have the opportunity with the larger banks that are global to also roll it out at scale as a global solution. And when Hong Kong helps you to get into those institutions, I think that is basically the start of a global global journey. David, please ask a question. Um, hi there, thanks so much for the opportunity to engage again. Uh, as I mentioned on the chat, we're really fortunate to take part in such a fantastic event that is Hong Kong FinTech Week. And there just seems to be a wealth of um, programs between Cyberport and, and other solutions in Hong Kong. So I really think, uh, you know, you're really to be commended on, on that. Um, we took part uh, and presented a collaborative AML solution, um, which is for transaction monitoring and allows banks to share uh, insights about a transaction without sharing the underlying data. And um, I, I just wonder, not being on the ground there yet, as we haven't been able to expand properly in the last uh, in the last twelve months or so. Are there any collaborative um, kind of structured engagements happening between banks where you're you're joining up thinking on 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 AML in particular or, or other initiatives that RegTechs could get involved in? Is there is there a you know a in, an actual kind of any projects in particular that are pulling together the banks or working groups that we could get involved in? Irene, do you want to maybe elaborate a bit, given you're involved with the fintech group at industry level? Um, yes. So um, actually, um, in the industry level, we have uh, different thematics um, discussion on the right tech adoption. So definitely, you are very right that transaction monitoring is always the key risk step on top or at the heart of our um, discussion, because um, this is how to uh, comply with all the regulations as the AML and also the transaction monitoring and how we escalate suspicious transaction and report to the regulators. So traditionally, um, every banks already have their own system. And however, the breaking parts is that um, our a, a system will actually look at maybe the snapshots on the um, 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 escalation. And for the big data or trend analysis in the industry wide angle, I think um, the, the major of the um, 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 use case or pain point we, can ha we are having is a utility. Meaning that if the clients have different bank banking accounts and have different major um, banker and we are not the sole ones. So we only can have the monitoring of the individual accounts or the account families in our own universe. However, when we want to trace um, a suspicious transaction outside of our environment, it will be very painful and hard for us to do so. So um, having a, like, like you mentioned, a collaborative industry or a, a, a utility backed by a, a governmental organization or regulator would be something that we are trying to explore. And, and, and you can foresee that um, having that utility would be very beneficial. But however, at the back of the scene, there will be a lot of controversies um, in, 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 in dealing with all this, in, in, in including like data privacy, cross-border uh, and all that. And, and not to mention it, it's not a domestic issues. And all the global banks would have a cross uh, kind of um, a jurisdictional kind of relationship with the other booking centers. So um, it will not be very um, easy to have that linked for that utility. And I will tell you in, the, um, in this industry discussion, um, we are trying to build up a utility concept, um, 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 putting uh, aside on the monitoring, uh, uh, transaction monitoring first, but we are looking for the other utility for the other purpose as the building block, like 
product due diligence utility where PWMA is, is, is very keen on that. And then with that use case and with that kind of technology and concept, then we gradually can expand it to the other use case, like what you mentioned about like transaction monitoring, account opening, that sort of thing. And also as part of the Greater Bay um, area, Hong Kong is part of it. And if the clients would like to have some uh, account opening up in China uh, 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 with the help of the Hong Kong banks, then those utility would be also helpful to link the utility and the database in China as well. So that maybe if we have done uh, onboarding uh, or KYC checks in Hong Kong, then when they want to open up an uh, account in the Greater Bay and some streamlined kind of approach can be adopted with the help of that utility. So uh, I think that would be such kind of discussion, small uh, bits by pieces and then co uh, collectively become something big to achieve or, or tackle some more bigger topic. But we, we try to start it for some small things uh, like what um, Wendy mentioned, not boiling the ocean but start up some quick wins. And then eventually we will have some good use cases to expand to the other areas. Hope that helps. Um, Ruth, uh, this is Raymond. May I, may I also um, supplement a bit uh, on this? Yes, please go ahead, Raymond. Yeah, uh, thank you for the question, um, uh, David. Uh, I think um, we, apart from you know, our general red tech uh, push, uh, we also have a dedicated team looking after AML red tech use cases. They actually organized a couple of events in the past, uh, including a hackathon, a uh, um, AML red tech forum. Uh, I, um, maybe uh, I think there's something more we should do so as to reach out to more firms, like including uh, the firm uh, David is working with. Um, and then, um, and then I think uh, from those forum, from those discussion, I think we have heard um, several pain points, how we can you know, further develop uh, red tech use cases. Uh, the lack of data, uh, which Wendy mentioned is say a, 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 uh, immediately comes to my mind. So I think, and, and then uh, utility building up the infrastructure, et cetera, also other issues that we will have to overcome. Uh, I would suggest I will uh, um, maybe um, after this forum, I can uh, link um, David up with some of my colleagues uh, looking after AML red tech use cases so that uh, you would have uh, um, you know, uh, um, more information about mm -hmm. how, what we are doing in terms of uh, promoting uh, red tech use cases, uh, red tech adoption in the AML space. I must say that King has been particularly helpful already, and and we're well linked uh, linked there, and it's it's really great. I think that you know there's there's probably an opportunity for a regulator, and and we're doing some work in Switzerland at the moment with a number of banks. But um, there's what, what what the gray hairs I have here are from being CEO of a consent management company, where I was trying to convince banks that with consent that you could share data amongst yourselves to do things. And uh, I, I just was going about it in the wrong way. But, and I think now with privacy preserving technologies that allows data to stay at the banks, but for them to share insight and knowledge, I think there's a real opportunity to do things which should help the world in that we, we currently are only preventing 1% of, 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 of money laundering globally as, as we, we, we know from our work with the FCA sandbox here in, in, in London as well. And I think there's an opportunity for Hong Kong because you are very dynamic and willing to kind of do things to perhaps to perhaps take a lead on that because uh, nobody wants to get to a stage where there's a big pooling of data, which which requires 15 different banks, legal teams to agree on and also agree with GDPR and the data right and every other uh, thing under the sun. So um, thankfully there are technologies there that, that can help this, um, of which there's us and others, uh, uh, but uh, uh, I just think that, you know, we've been buoyed by um, by Hong Kong's approach and, and look forward to hopefully working to bring some start, start doing some things and then build it out from there, fingers crossed. But thank you again for, for your engagement. Thanks. 
uh, if I may just add a quick comment to supplement what uh, Raymond said and also in address to uh, David's question. Now, so obviously the HMA is a very major driver to set uh, various standards. Now, so besides RegTech, another uh, major initiative uh, in case David that you're not uh, so, so too familiar with is the uh, project uh, CDI, Commercial Data Interchange. So that's another major project uh, also under the lead of uh, HMA. So I think that that project really addressed a major problem about the, the standards of exchanging data across different parties, not only within the financial institutions, but also exchanging data with the non-FIs. So that project is underway. Uh, and the, the other thing that's very nice uh, uh, development is that uh, HMA also has, to my knowledge, uh, there's another kind of like a POC project, if you will, that uh, HMA also collaborated with an organization called Astri. So Astri is the largest uh, applied science technology research institute in Hong Kong. So the, one of the things that they are working on is to uh, basically build this POC around uh, federated learning. So I think this goes back to your question, uh, to your point about sharing data without sharing the secrets, so to speak. So uh, I think that is something that's underway. So once that the POC is done, I think that will also give more confidence to the different stakeholders to adopt this new approach in sharing data. Very helpful, King. Okay, mentioning, Sorry. Yeah, th thank you, King, for mentioning the CDI project and also other projects that we are working on. Um, apart from the financial incentive that the government is offering to tech firms and financial institutions to promote red tech adoption, what we see, which is also very, very important, is that um, building up those infrastructure that would facilitate the banks or the tech firm to, 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 to implement their red tech solution. CDI is one thing. Um, I think uh, uh, people, uh, uh, friends from Hong Kong will be aware that we also, the government also rolled out the I am smart, um, uh, which is a, ID, uh, a digital ID uh, for Hong Kong residents. And the HMA is also working on a corporate version of the digital ID. Uh, David mentioned about pulling the, um, you know, all those transaction data together to, to into a single pool. We appreciate that the, um, Banks in the US, uh, some of those major banks, they are uh, doing this. We are looking into it and see if there's a, a way of this, uh, 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 whether it is feasible under our privacy law to doing something um, similar. So this is something down the road we'll consider. So what I want to point out is that we see the need for building the infrastructure which would facilitate, which, are also, which is very important to facilitate both fintech and regtech adoption. And we are working on that. And we are open to suggestions how we can further facilitate the industry to, 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 to adopt more technology solutions. Great, Raymond. Uh, does anybody else have a question? We mentioned so many initiatives and just maybe to echo the last few words you mentioned there, I think, establishing digital identity, establishing the infrastructure to share the relevant data and to have all the safeguards in place. I think this is really an area where Hong Kong can take the lead because this anti-money laundering challenge for banks has been with us for so long. And mm -hmm. every jurisdiction always has this question, can we share the data? Can we rely on other banks having done checks? And as soon as you start automating and providing the right levels of security and operational sort of excellence to it, then of course I would say you can. So I think it would be really brilliant with help of the RegTech's inputs and suggestions, uh, as well as the banks to have Hong Kong as that sort of test bed to start this off. Because I think everybody's been talking about needing to do it, but no one's ever actually taken a step. Uh, and this has been a discussion for the last 10 years. Wendy, do you have maybe some additional um, comments to share also on, on this particular point? Uh, it, no, I don't think anything that uh, I, I could add particularly insightful on top of what Irene or Ra Raymond have said in terms of our approach and some of the challenges, um, but also kind of moving forward. But I, I, I will say uh, to the question yeah. of do we have 
do we have opportunities um, or are there opportunities for any of these reg techs on the call to share from an industry perspective? Um, so, yes, I think, you know, the Hong Kong associations of banks and also in the virtual banking community, we've set up an industry group to share um, information around reg techs in general so that we can start talking about innovation and start setting the scene for um, you know, further knowledge and, and further sharing of some of the reg techs that are available. So um, if anybody has uh, any interest in doing that from a VB perspective, I think we're all very interested to understand solutions that are out there um, and they can reach me on LinkedIn. Great, this is really helpful. And I think just generally to make the point that we have here a selected group of individuals and businesses and the idea is of course to maintain this network and to be in dialogue because we would really like after you've sort of digested all this information to come back with ideas, to come back with questions, also to come back to Keith, who's the UK based representative of Hong Kong Invest, as well as uh, to King. And of course, feel free to reach out to myself as well. Um, and it's true that in some instances, um, the sort of neo banks or virtual banks, as Wendy put it, are sort of a bit more proactively looking at quicker implementations of certain reg tech solutions because they don't have that legacy challenge. But equally, um, we have to tackle the bigger banks in terms of the ability to automate processes. And I think as an example, and I'm sure we have some of you on, on this call, we have solutions now where people can automate their compliance process and procedures and make sure that there's a whole digital process flow with the right flags in place and having those things in place, whether it's your, for your private wealth management clients or for your general account opening onboarding um, and AML compliance is something that can so incredibly cut the cost in banks um, and also reduce this operational risk uh, that we do see with manual interventions. Um, so that just as another example to be a bit more granular and, and maybe echoing um, also the points that I, Irene made around the talent um, I think we do have some amazing solutions in the AI space for risk modeling. Uh, people haven't even tackled the sort of synthetic data set, risk modeling, agent-based risk modeling. Um, and there are solutions out there, but they do require the right talent on the bank side to be able to work with the solutions. So the upskilling piece, um, and as, as you mentioned, Wendy, is really important to actually make, to avail of these beneficial solutions that are coming to the market. Um, but I would always say, given that AML has been a challenge with us for so long, let's start with those things we know are a challenge and let's look at it differently in terms of implementation and creating that infrastructure that Raymond mentioned. I think this would be a brilliant concluding step from our discussion today and I would welcome everybody to engage with all of us because I think what we try to do today is really just set the first step to get a lot more engagement with the reg techs and the banks in the market on making this happen in Hong Kong. Raymond, would you like to say a few words? Um, yeah, thank you. I, I think the discussion today is very helpful and thank you for, for um, you know, uh, Ruth, your summary, which is, um, which is comprehensive and, and insightful. And uh, I think we have spent a lot of time on, um, uh, uh, um, on the opportunities available uh, in the AML space, but I don't, don't overlook uh, one other uh, possible avenue of uh, use cases, which is in relation to um, conduct surveillance. I think King mentioned about the 14, um, uh, the mainland China's uh, 14 uh, development plan. Uh, RegTech is mentioned as one of the uh, um, uh, um, um, major driver. Another major driver is actually the uh, uh, um, Great Bay Area which comprises Hong Kong, Macau, and uh, nine cities in the Guangdong province of China. Um, um, one, one major development is the Wealth Connect that um, you know, banks in Hong Kong are really, really interested. Um, we are talking about the, in the great, uh, great Bay Area, the GBA area, Instead of a 7 million in Hong Kong, we are talking about a 17 million people. Most of those people are uh, middle class people. They require wealth management. If they manage their wealth from Hong Kong, that means big business uh, for, 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 uh, for, for, for banks in Hong Kong. So we have heard um, um, 
announcement from the major banks, um, some incumbent uh, uh, conventional banks like City, they are going to employ um, five, uh, 500 more financial advisors, uh, Standard Charter, 300 more. Um, so I think um, without technology, I think it would be very difficult for banks to make sure that the selling process is sufficiently robust and consistent with their bank policies. So with, on this particular space, I think um, in terms of conduct surveillance, this um, um, selling, making sure the selling process is robust, you know, technology like uh, natural language processing, uh, machine learning, identifying, you know, um, uh, selling uh, 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 traits, those technology would have uh, a lot of potential in our market as well. I think I, I just want to bring this up uh, before before we conclude uh, today's session. This is very helpful, and um, I, I do agree. I think wealth management for such an amount of people, you've got the market access, you've got the the customer base, and it's really important that those processes are all consistent and in line with the laws, so that uh, that market is actually able to develop and grow, and wealth grows in that market. So this is really helpful. Thank you very much for that. Um, Briefly, have... uh, may, may I just add uh, one quick comment? I just want to <laughs> not supplement uh, Raymond's points. Now, um, I guess for many of you have been, uh, in case you are following the development in Hong Kong, you probably heard of uh, HMA quite often. But at the same time, we have other uh, regulators in a way that are also following the lead of uh, HMA. So now besides the banks, so I, I have to say, because we uh, have the, the, the privilege to see the entire the ecosystem. So the banks are definitely leading the way, probably three, five years ahead of everyone else. But then there are the other guys, right? There are the, the securities firms, the, the asset managers, the insurance companies, the, the, the insurance brokers. So those are the ones that are sort of like further, further behind. And uh, in a way, the, what we hope to see is that uh, as uh, the, the, the banks are taking the lead in adopting, you know, the various technologies, maybe using the CDI to share data. So once the banks showed the way, then the other uh, segments were followed. So that's why I think the opportunities that the Raymond mentioned earlier, in which I think one third of the banks adopted red tech. So that's really the tip of the iceberg. This the entire segments in Hong Kong, they are not even there yet. Um, so again, uh, we just uh, hopeful that I think for those of you who are on the call, you find this sharing uh, useful. And there's just a lot of opportunities and also a lot of help we need from the international rec tech community to help us to, to basically raise the capabilities of the Hong Kong rec tech space. Excellent, this is really helpful, I agree. This is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a whole market that is still maturing in terms of digitization and it's very consistent with what we see in the UK and in Europe. Um, there are a number of other financial services players that are still behind. And as soon as the banks robustly implement at scale, the others can just follow. So that is a very good point. So we're coming up to, to the end of our session. I hope that everybody on the call and particularly the rec techs have felt it beneficial to get all of those direct insights from Hong Kong in terms of all the help that is here and all the, the measures that they are taking and continue to take to stimulate business connections and development. And as I said, I invite everybody to stay close to this group um, share your views and comments, and uh, I wish the banks and the reg techs together a real success in Hong Kong and, and hopefully also setting global standards and implementing things that we can test in Hong Kong to work and then bring to the rest of the world. So thank you very much, Raymond. Thank you very much, King. Thank you very much, Irene and Wendy, and also David for your comments, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Ruth. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank Great you. session. Thank you.